it, from a collector's perspective, what what should I be looking for? Do you think? I think Hoyas are going to be very collectible, mm. very desirable. I do think some of the earlier Tag Heuer stuff, like the eighties and the nineties stuff, is now going to start to become very popular. Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of our chat with Watchers of Lancashire. Uh, we saw some fabulous watches in part one and part two is no exception. So once again, I'd like to say hi again to Dan and Ian. And uh, we're going to look at some Hoyers and something from maybe from Top Gun. We'll wait and see. So Hoyer Otavia, I'll be honest, it's not a watch I'm that familiar with. No, and it's an odd looking thing. It is an odd looking thing, but the look, amazing. Give us a little bit of a potted history of these two if you wouldn't mind so this is a automatic version of the Ortavia uh, with the caliber 12 in it uh, this is the GMT version of the higher Ortavia which is slightly later this um, patina wearing whatever you call it the, the fading on the the bezel is beautiful yeah, so and that that I presume would have been pretty bold at one time in mm. colors yeah. yeah bright blue and red Pretty much like the uh, Rolex GMT, and this this blue, well, it's almost gone like a gunmetal grey color. Is that would you say that's pretty typical of how that construction has faded, or is is this one just gone an amazing color? I think that has just gone quite an amazing yeah. color. What's interesting is, well, you know, obviously you can see the patina fading, but it's the the GMT hand has not lost any of its day glow. No brightness. It's ama- it, It's mm. probably been quite well protected. So this this has probably been affected by maybe been sea water or mm. whatever you've got on your watch. Whereas the hands have been quite well protected mm. from. Now, give us the ages of these. So the 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 non GMT watch. When does this one date from? So that's early seventies. Okay, and the GMT. Uh, it's later seventies. Okay. Off camera, you mentioned an interesting story to me <laughs> yeah. about the 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 non GMT one. Just yep. hit us with that one again. So it was something to do with a cigarette brand. Yeah. And if you sent a coupon in, instead of having to pay $200 for the watch, you got to pay 88 $88 for the watch. For, for smoking. For that watch. For that watch. Dollars. Yep. 88 US. Yep. So back then, it was probably, I don't know how many dollars to the pound. 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, it probably leads me naturally to say, what is this particular one on for at the moment? Do you know? That one's not for sale at the minute. Okay. But it's an impeccable example and it'll be going up for... Ballpark? Probably about five to six. So she got it for 88 bucks. It was a, it was good. a, it was a good buy, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Damn good buy. Got another hoyer here, which I freely confess I had to learn the name of today. <laughs> Um, the, I'm looking to check. I've got a Detto 45. Yep. Uh, this is, I think, one of the most unusual and, dare I say it, slightly unintuitive watches I've seen in a long while. What's the history of this watch, do you know? So this is one of the variations of the Carrera. Um, I think it's quite obvious why they call it the date or 45, because the date's at 45 seconds. Um, and it's a minute and seconds chronograph so it's only got the the minutes register mm-hmm. and the rotating seconds when you press the start stop the chronograph and when does this one date from that's 60s 60s okay we were talking earlier today about hoyers and tag hoyers what what would you say is most popular is the provenance of hoyer more desirable or are tag hoyers more desirable or is there like a a kind of in between point where one kind of crosses over into the other that becomes really desirable it from a collector's perspective what what should i be looking for do you think i think hires are going to be very collectible mm. very desirable i do think some of the earlier tag oil stuff like the 80s and the 90s stuff is now going to start to become very popular like the SELs, the mm. 2000s the 4000s even 6000s sort of the professional series yeah yeah i think because a lot of people got these when they were 21 and have yeah. wrecked them and now want to replace <laughs> them yeah. with the same watch again. So I, I do think they're going to get more popular. Yeah, it's really interesting because I remember when I got my first Tag Heuer that we mentioned in the previous video that I don't think it was that long after it became Tag Heuer 
Because uh, I remember there was a second-hand version of my watch in the window that was a Hoyer. Right. So, you know, it must have been right at that transitional period. But for me, I was really into Formula One. Ayrton Senna was a bit of a hero. And it was you could see Tag Hoyer on the front of his McLaren. <clears throat> and at that point in time, the word tag on it was just really cool. It's that quite iconic red and green logo. Mm, was, yeah. It's still, it's still dead. Yeah, really the first cool tags today. I had only had it in black and white. Right. I don't think it was until I got a 1500 series that it was... Printed in colour. It was the that. colour one. Yeah. I thought that was really cool because it was quite glossy. It was, it was, it, it felt very lustrous, that look yeah. when you had it on it. The other watch we've got here is, I mean, it's got a proper name. It's a Porsche Design Orfino. Yep. It's not how we know it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... I'm going to resist the temptation to come out with corny lines. We're not going to have any Kenny Loggins music over this. <laughs> Maybe we'll edit in something. Just I think you cool. should. I think we should. Yeah, yeah. there's got to be an F15 or an F14 Tomcat in there somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Whatever. Yeah, it's it's it is well, it, it is and it isn't the watch that Tom Cruise wore in both <laughs> Top Gun films. Yep. I genuinely thought this was a very new watch you've really surprised me by saying it's not i mean it's immaculate it is tell us a little bit about this watch especially why this one is slightly more unique so this is the same as what he wore in the films but this is the military spec version with the 3h would these have been issued to the military then yeah so were they commercially available as well do you know without that 3h on the dial right which is what he actually wore in the film yeah yeah because I, I think it's interesting. The irony is he probably in the film might have actually had that yeah. if it had been military issued yeah. rather than the one he did wear. We think this is PVD'd? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it is PVD. I mean, it's we all know how PVD scratches. It's There's not a mark on this watch. Oh, I it's... mean, have you, got, have you got a date for it, a rough date for it? Do you know? Just the 80s. What would you expect this then to fetch? We think it'll probably... When it goes on our site, we would be asking £6,000 for it. Does something like Maverick coming out mean that you get more interest in it and you can charge an extra premium on it? Because there's got to be a higher demand for this now. I think the demand certainly increases and it increases the cost of anything that's collectible. Mm. People are interested in it, people want to buy it. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's a surge for it. There's so many features about those watches out there. And, you know, you look, there's this great big gap and then suddenly Maverick comes out and everybody's writing about the watch again. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it clearly it's, some, yeah, it's something you can capitalise on. We always do at some point in these videos a wrist check because people like to see what people are actually wearing. Uh, I've got my venerable Rolex Explorer 2 on uh, a rather nice uh, Zulu Diver Typhoon strap. Um, what have you got, Dan? I've got a Rolex Air King from 1963. It's in amazing condition, or have you tweaked that in any way? I, I, it's been serviced and refurbished by myself. Okay. But apart from that, it's. What did you have to do to 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 make to to refurb it? Um, a light polish to the case, mm -hmm. and then a movement completely stripped down, cleaned, oiled, assembled. And you did that completely yourself. Yeah. Guys, you know where to go for your Rolex <laughs> service. Go to Dan. What have you got, Ian? I have a 1950s Amiga chocolate on. Wow, nice. And where did you get that? Bought it a few weeks ago off a customer. Oh, <laughs> so it's <laughs> really new. <laughs> 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 okay, fair enough, fair enough. Every, all the watches we've seen in this video and the last video are superb. And we're enormously grateful. Thank you for bringing them in. But there's obviously the dream watches out there that we've all wanted. Again, people are always curious, especially for professionals in the industry like yourselves. What's your grail watch? What What would you have? Money is no object. What would you buy? Yeah. My, mine would be this watch in 18 karat gold, but with a full calendar, moon phase, year and month. A uh, year. Uh, sorry, right. not month and date. Wow. And what do you think the chances of acquiring that are? I could probably find one, but it's... It's pricing it, and what, what? What just out of interest? What would it? What would you expect to pay for that? I would think for a good one, I'd be paying maybe twelve, fifteen thousand. Okay, so, so it's not, almost it's not almost doable. Just a rare watch, though. Yeah, find. yeah. Okay, Dan. I've always wanted. I'm a really big Breitling fan, uh, and cool. I've always wanted the Breitling Co-Pilot, a vintage sixties one. Co-Pilot. Yeah. Interesting. What what attracts you to the Co-Pilot? It's just. 
slightly different than the the general navy timer mm -hmm. of the period. It's fairly like a, con a standard chronograph with two register mm -hmm. with a rotating bezel. That's not a, a sub brand they've kept going, is it? No, no. no. When, do you know when they, they they stopped making those? It was in. The, it was only available in the sixties. Right. Okay. Okay. What would you expect to pay for that? Do you think something similar to Ian, probably about twelve to fifteen okay. for a good example. Gosh, they're both almost doable. Yeah. On a good day. Yeah. It's just finding them. Just finding them and pay for them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, all I can say again is. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. And then hopefully at some time we're going to pop up to your offices and see what you've got there because I've, I've seen a tiny little bit of what they've got up there and it looks amazing. So we'll maybe take the cameras up and um, we'll, we'll do this again. Thank you again. Thank you. And thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe um, to the channel and uh, we'll see you again very soon.